Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm, as, as introduced, I'm Bojan Anand. I'm from uh, National University of Singapore. I'm teaching there on the topics uh, which I'm going to talk today. So it's basically AR and VR. And it's uh, my pleasure to be here today to inspire the young minds on the most exciting technologies of the decade, uh, AR and VR. Uh, hope at the end of this talk, you will get some idea about these uh, new technologies and uh, some motivation to go and explore further and get some in-depth uh, insights about the technology. Uh, there are lots of materials available in the net and outside there, okay, for you to explore. Okay, so without uh, further delay, let me just move on. Let's get excited. Okay. So virtual reality is basically uh, when you create any computer-generated 3D world, and you try to make it like uh, look very, very real and sound real and uh, no, uh, interact with you in, in, a, in a very realistic manner. And as well as uh, when it feels real, we call it as virtual reality. Okay, so it can be very simple or it can be like hyper VR. A simple one is uh, in the left side of the image, what you can see, it just gives you the visual and audio cues. But in the right side, you can have haptics and no, you can feel the environment. Uh, so that what we call, simply call it as a hyper VR. So it's one of the most powerful tools we have today to enable presence by creating immersion. So what it means, basically, for example, if you take this hall, we have a fantastic display system and a very good audio system and uh, uh, nice slides and nice speakers from the morning. Uh, so all these things are put together to uh, bring in the immersion, but the presence is very, very subjective. Okay, it may differ from one, one person to another person. Your one's experience may be different from another's experience. And the, the thing which we feel very hard here in VR design and development is creating this presence because it's hard to explain, so it's hard to create. Augmented reality is a related technique. So what you can see here is basically you're putting some uh, virtual objects on top of the real world. So it can be as simple as the first image there. So you just overlay something on the, on the image to give some contextual information. Or, uh, it, I mean, uh, same as the, I mean, similar one is the Pokemon Go, where the Pokemon just appear on the flat surfaces wherever uh, on the road or wherever you can, you can find it, according to the configurations. And the most complex one is the given in the bottom right, the, uh, bottom right corner there. Uh, it's kind of uh, a perfect AR system where the character there can interact with the real world. It can identify where the edges, where the corners, and it can interact with this uh, exact the table in this case. It knows that the next step it will fall down. So if that kind of uh, seamless integration is there, then we call it as mixed reality. So in AR, the presence is viewed in a different way. We call it as uh, it's here presence. So which means you need to realize that the, whatever the virtual object you put on the real world, you should feel like it's there, okay, or it's here in that scene. It should not be like, you should not see it as a separate from the real world. It should be like tightly integrated, seamlessly integrated, so that you can feel that it's here. So before moving further, I'm going to give you some demonstrations developed by uh, students in my course. These are like a four or five weeks assignments. Uh, there are some VR experiences, a couple of games here, and then followed by that one of the learning tools. Um, so I'm going to play the video, you may just feel like it may, look, it may look like just the normal 3D games, which you normally play in a, in a screen. Uh, it's nothing very fantastic. But when you play the same thing with a VR headset, the experience is totally different. Just to show how different is it, I just captured one of the students playing the game, and uh, I added it as a cutscene along the way. You can see that the real experience, what the user is experiencing. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> That's with a VR headset. This is another small print. Uh, it's uh, basically showing various kind of spells you can create in the hands. So 
So this all kind of works done in like six to four to six weeks uh, as a model assignment. And we are be as basically like most of people see it as just a, as a gaming tool, but it's not just gaming tool. It, ha it's much, it has to do much beyond games. And here there is one of the learning tools if you want to just practice drums. Uh, we are just one of the best way to do without disturbing others. This is again another app developed by our students. Uh, he is using the VR controller to play the drum. The challenge here is to produce the exact sound as a real drum from the virtual one. Of course, you can add some dances to make it more exciting. So as I said, VR is not just a gaming device that's used in many, many industries today. So education, entertainment, healthcare, uh, even employee training from you know, simple communication training to complex engineering training, and then uh, for business communications as well as autom automobile and many other industries. So you can find VR in almost all verticals today. Um, as estimated by experts, uh, the VR's uh, uh, projected growth is about 117 billion in the year 2022. Uh, that's uh, in USD. And if you see that in games, it's about 180 billion. So to give you a perspective, uh, if you compare Hollywood in this uh, example here, here, like year 2018, games like uh, its cross revenue is 137 billion. Uh, if you put movie and music industries together, the total revenue is less than 70 billion in year 2018. So that kind of shows that games have already like doubled the revenue of uh, movie industry. And then VR is also growing in a very, uh, in a very uh, steep scale. As shown in this diagram, you can see that uh, the technology adoption rates for various uh, technologies from the history. So for uh, electricity to reach about 25% of the US population, it took about uh, 50 years and telephone is about 40 years, and if you move up, you can see a smartphone uh, just in five years or less than five years, it has reached 25% of the US population. But we are, in this, in this line, it is supposed to reach in two years, but it didn't happen. It is projected to take at least 10 years to really uh, become a, a consumer device. So the consumer adoption for VR, even though it's exciting technology, used in many, many industries, but it's very, so the reason behind that is, I can say about lots of reasons, but I can, I, I, in this uh, slides, I'm going to just give you some six important pointers, which can, can give you, kind of give you an, an idea about why the consumer adoption is very, very slow. The very first reason for lower adoption rate is the user experience. As I said in the beginning, creating the presence, the user experience is very, very difficult for VR. It's very hard. And it's not like just creating a 3D game or 3D simulation in for, a, for a PC screen. It's totally different from that. For example, you might have seen games in which often the people use uh, teleporting. So as you can see in the left screen there, the movement is always based on teleporting from one location to another location. They try to avoid uh, movement using the controllers or walking using the controllers because that causes lots of uh, motion sickness or discomfort for the user. Similarly, on the right side, you may have seen some games which basically hide some part of the screen every time. This is in VR. So why they hide it? When the velocity is not constant, if it is not linear, if it is like changing due to acceleration now and then, it creates lots of discomfort for the user. So to avoid this discomfort, they try to remove the uh, vision, the peripheral vision, the contents of the peri peripheral vision, so that you can only focus on the middle point, and that kind of reduces the sickness. So likewise, there are many, many things a VR designer need to understand and put all these things together to really create a perfect experience for the user. And the second reason for lower consumer adoption is because there is not enough contents, quality contents. There are many, many VR things there, but they are not like perfectly usable or pocket immersive enough. So still the most popular applications, if you look into the markets, is games. But 
again, there are only very limited set of games. And if you see other applications, there are very, very few. So if you find what you call, if you do a next clear application for VR, one single compelling application definitely can become the next billionaire. The third reason is the cost. The cost is high and is also increasing. As new versions come, the cost is increasing. There are improvements in rendering, improvements in performance, and things so on, but the cost keep going up. And uh, there is no point in buying a $2,000 headset uh, to, when you don't have contents or useful contents for you to um, uh, experience. And if you look into the mobile app markets, games are not only the, the highly downloaded applications, there are also like other applications which are also highly downloaded. For example, like you no, know, Facebook has much higher downloads than the most popular game of, for the last 10 years, Candy Crush Saga. The next important reason is the devices what we have today, the VR headsets or the AR devices, they are not compact enough. You cannot use this kind of uh, headset shown in the screen uh, for you no, know, just like a regular everyday glass. It's very bulky. So we need something like this. The top, I, I show two images. One is like a VR glass, another one is an AR glass. It's a glass which has a see-through display, and it has all the sensors, cameras, and in fact, connection to a very high-speed network like 5G network, and so on. So this is what we are expecting to happen in future. And the technology is not yet ready for consumer market because consumer expects the experience, right? The immersive experience. So. For example, here I just highlighted one of the things. I mean, there is a lack in almost all these things listed here. Resolution, weight, brightness, everything. But uh, if you look into the FOV alone, human eye can basically, you can view uh, 190 degrees with head movement and eye movement. But the VR displays, what you have, can today cover only 110 uh, degrees of field of vision. So that's like not sufficient. So the technology has to improve further to really create a perfect immersion. Because of these reasons, most of the upcoming devices, like Microsoft, so HoloLens 2, and uh, Vive Enterprise, they're all focusing on enterprise and you know, commercial markets, not the consumer market. Uh, the reason, as, I, as we explored so far, uh, VR has very powerful applications or very useful applications in the industry but it's not at having a compelling or very useful application for normal uh, usage or for consumer usage. But it may follow the internet way. Internet, of course, if you see long back, when internet was first introduced to the market, it was very popular. Uh, I mean, it, it started, the people started using it in the workplace first, and after workplace, they went to the netcalf, and later they brought it to the home. The same thing may happen. So they get the first-hand experience of VR at the, at the industry, and later they bring the technology to the home. And that's what we are expecting to happen. OK, in the next few slides, I'm going to give you some important or uh, some of the techniques we are working on in our lab. Uh, basically, there are uh, three important works going on in our lab to enable consumer or mass adoption of the VR headsets or VR systems. So the first one is cloud streaming, and the next one is uh, real-time 3D mesh construction, and the uh, last one is uh, low-cost interfaces. So let me just quickly tell you what are these things. The first one is um, uh, uh, cloud-based streaming, and because 5G is going to be rolled out very soon, in fact, I think uh, uh, in Korea, uh, they already have uh, 5G handphones up. Uh, with 5G, the latency is going to like reduce 10 times lower than the 4G. So that's very, very perfect for VR. It's uh, the latency to the edge, which means the communication delay to the, to the network um, tower is less than one millisecond. So VR needs such a kind of very low latency to create immersion. The bandwidth, it's about 10 Gbps, is 1,000 times faster than 4G. Just to give you a perspective, to download a full-length HD movie, it will take about six to seven seconds with 5G technology. And another interesting thing happening in the 5G is the edge computing, where the edge, the telco edge, that means the telco tower, offers some storage and computation. So putting it all together, what you can do is you can move lots of computation and storage to the cloud and just stream the computed content to the VR glasses. 
Of course, you need to like stream it in a very high resolution, like 4K or 6K uh, resolution uh, in six degree of freedom or at least 360 degree video. So in this case, you need a very high resolution. So 5G provides that. Uh, and we are looking forward to you know, integrate cloud streaming with 5G. The another technique we are working on in our lab is for mobile phones without any kind of uh, depth information, there is no depth camera, we want to reconstruct the real world as it is. So as you walk, have, have your phone and walk around, you should be able to recognize and reconstruct the mesh for the real world. And in this video, as you can see, the mesh is reconstructed, so which means the application understands the real world. And then, because the application can understand, my virtual objects can interact with the real world. It's not just laid on top. It can interact, it can bounce back, it can, it can recognize what object is there in the real world, and no, it can interact with it. So doing this in a resource-limited devices like Novia Glass is very, very, very expensive. We are actually coming up with so-called cloud AR. We are trying to put all this uh, mesh construction to the cloud, and next time you go to the same place, you can just download it from the cloud. So it'll be faster. The third item which we are working on is basically low-cost interfaces. So what you are seeing here is a VR bike, where uh, it has basically just two sensors. And the one sensor is on the wheel, other on in the, in, in the steering. So it basically measures the rotations of the wheel and transfers that into uh, so-called the visual movement in the screen. Uh, just for an example, I just have a short demo on that. So VR is not just for games, even you can use for fitness applications. And the cost we need to spend here is very, very minimum because you already have a bike at home. What you need to buy is two sensors, which will totally cost less than $10. And you can explore the world. Of course, this is a student work. It's done in like four weeks' time. But if you like, want to like do or really build something better, you can build this entire Singapore city map or you know, some other like Paris or London city map. And you can navigate around the city uh, while you know, cycling in the same place. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.